to have you here today. Welcome. My name is Kelsey. Welcome, Clarice. Welcome, John. Welcome, Valerie. Welcome, Carol. Welcome, Elena. Welcome, everyone. Um, Carol says greetings from Central Florida, just as Carol has done. Do let me know where you are tuning in from today. And if you have ever been to Spain, we are in Santander, which is in northern Spain today. And uh, as you can see, I am sitting on a very European street with lots of cobblestones and lots of old, beautiful buildings. Um, while everyone is just arriving, in terms of using the platform, as you can see, you have all of the comments popping up there. So do let me know if anything is ever, um, if you ever can't hear me, can't see me. Um, you are my eyes and ears to the show, so do keep me posted on what you are seeing and hearing, especially the wind. We do have a lot of wind up here in northern Spain. You can also see where the location is in case you want to know where exactly is that street corner. Click on the location part and you will be able to see in real time the Google Maps where we are and uh, what the names of the streets are called. Awesome. So welcome, everyone. Again, my name is Kelsey. I am originally from Chicago, but I am living with my husband in Valencia, which is on the Mediterranean coast. And we are about one hour on an airplane north in northern Spain. So we are in the beautiful city of Santander today. And uh, with all my tours, I like to show you some kind of local favorite so something that's recommended by a local so when i met my airbnb host today i said where should i eat and she said kelsey you have to go to this beautiful delicious waffle place which is right here so i will uh i will save you all of the running and sweating that i did to get here but basically they sell catalan cream waffles which uh, is basically a waffle with a cold version of creme brulee on top of it. So I ate about half of it and I did want to save some. To actually, here, I'll just, I'll just hold it up for you. I wanted to save some to show you what it is, what it looks like, and what it tastes like. I'm such a foodie. I'm always going places for food. So this is one of the, uh, one of the delicious treats that I have found today. I do have one more food thing to show you at the end of the tour. But basically, it is a yummy waffle. It is very soft, very buttery, and lots of powdered sugar on top of it. And then we have the Catalan cream, which I don't know if any of you have had Catalan cream before, but it's basically uh, a low-fat, citrusy version of creme brulee. So it, um, it's, it's cold also, but it does have the, the um, it, you know, when they take the torch and they, like, blow, like, blow the fire on top of the sugar. I'm sure there is some name for that, but I'm very distracted. <laughs> but yes, they, um, it, it, it does have very crunchy sugar on top and it's super delicious. So let me, uh, let me tell you more. Flambe. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> oh yes. It's very creamy. Um, and bonus, it is actually not as high fat as creme brulee because it's made with cornstarch instead of with uh, cream. So it still has the same consistency of like thick, creamy, yummy, but it's cornstarch, so it's not as not as fatty. So that's always a good thing. Oh, it's so delicious! The waffle is warm, and the crumb, the um, kettle and cream is cold. So it's a nice combination of the two. It also smells very sugary, very, um, very much like a, like a sweets factory. You know, like when you walk in and you smell croissants, and that's what this smells like. And of course, this place has all kinds of croissants too. No, I don't work here. I just like it. <laughs> um, all right. Now that you've seen me, let's go ahead and uh, start our little walk. Oh, and I got new glasses too. Those of you who always talk about my nails, I hope you are enjoying my new glasses. Um, I've had quite a few old Spanish men literally walk right into me, and I'm thinking, wow, these glasses must be must be just astounding the population of the 60-plus Spanish men. <laughs> All right, so now that you've seen me, let's get started. Uh, here we go. 
All right, let me just grab the things and then we're gonna go ahead and have a look at that beautiful street over here. So again, we are in Santander, which is in Northern Spain. The, um, we're in the Cantabria region, which is known for meat, cheese, and seafood, because we are right on the coast. We will see some beautiful coastlines today. If you are just joining, we are in Santander in Northern Spain. My name is Kelsey. Do let me know where you are tuning in from. Um, the, the theme of this tour is old versus new. And the reason for that is that Santander had a massive fire in 1941. It did, we will go to the starting location of this fire, but it basically leveled the, oh, go ahead. <laughs> it basically leveled the entire old town. But we are sort of up on a hill. Not that that has anything to do with the fire, but the, uh, the location of where we are right now, these are some of the original buildings. Um, for the most part, we are seeing original 18th, 19th century buildings on this street that we're about to walk on. But in general, um, we will be seeing old versus new today. So let me actually, there's another delicious sweet shop that I, uh, I went in earlier and I just have to show you some of what I bought. Here are some of the delicious truffles. For those of you who are a truffle fan, a chocolate fan, or anything with sugar in general, this would be the place to be. <laughs> These are so, so delicious. It smells like melted chocolate. Of course, I've been in this shop three or four times since I've been here. This woman is like, well, you go somewhere else. But I do want to show you the delicious little shortbreads that they have here. Are they, they're sort of like shortbread cookies. But this is a, a very popular dessert up here. And they're, they're very buttery, very rich. Um, not too sweet, which is nice. But um, you get a whole box for like maybe six euros, which is a, a deal for me. And of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save some for my husband, or at least that's what I'm telling him. I'm gonna cut the box in half and be like, yes, I saved the whole box. <laughs> Here are some of the, the delicious pastries. And here are some more. Oh, don't they look so good? And here it smells like butter. There is no other way to describe it. It just smells like butter. Um, here are also some of the chocolates that they have. So this is strawberry chocolate, dulce de leche chocolate, dark chocolate, yuzu chocolate, um, and then candied oranges dipped in chocolate. <laughs> dipped in chocolate. If anyone has a way to describe yuzu, please, please, um, describe it for us because I just I have never had it and I from what I have heard it is a fruity sort of citrusy flavor but I also might be entirely wrong so if anyone has had yuzu do let us know what it is and how you liked it because <laughs> I would love to know also all right so the first mention of Santander was in 1068 so it's not as old as some of the other Spanish cities. Um, I'm just kind of walking by all of this construction, just like every old town in Spain. If you're, if you're at a place that doesn't have construction, clearly you're not in the old town. So I am just gonna walk by this real fast and save you from looking at the old, uh, the, uh, the construction. But we are half a block away from the prettiest block in Santander. So originally oh my gosh look at these so originally when span when this part of spain was built the beautiful balconies were a huge deal these balconies are some of the oh here's another view too were some of the typical architecture that you would find in northern spain and these luckily are some of the buildings that were not burned down in the fire. But the, uh, the very first mentions of Santander was in 1068. And since then, 
the city has done very well for itself. It, um, it is on a direct line to the UK. So a lot of folks from the UK have brought their, their, way back when they brought their supplies and now they bring their money. But that is also why we have quite a lot of wealth here. Not solely because of that, but it, it definitely helps. Um, this street is what the locals call sort of the, the English street because there are all kinds of pubs here, all kinds of cute decorations that as we walk down this street, you're, all, all of you folks from the UK are going to go, hey, that looks familiar. So I lived in a, a little town about two hours south of London a couple of years ago and walking through this street specifically, I'm going, this really looks like I'm back in London. So, uh, well, I don't know. For those of you who are from England, you do, do chime in and let me know your thoughts as well. But I think this is such a pretty, a pretty part here, especially with the flowers. Um, floral industry, the floral industry here is huge. There are flower shops about every third shop here. And they're in the front of just about every building as well, which I think is neat. Here again are some of the some of the pubs, which are so much fun. I was I was chatting with my my host and she said, you know, wine is a thing here. So if you ever want to really get your wine game on, the wine drinking starts at about 8:30 or 9 in the morning. So in case you ever are looking to to dig into your wines, this would be the place to do it. Um, these shops also have a lot of tapas in them, a lot of seafood. Uh, Cantabria, the whole Cantabrian region is full of seafood because we're right next to the coast. Um, I do want to show you, my, my mom is always in these tours and she's saying, Kelsey, you have to show more of the clothes. I love the clothes. So... So mom, here are some of the clothes for you. Um, these are just some of the the fabrics that you'll find here. A lot of the woven type of um, sort of look like crochet, but a little bit a little bit smaller knit, and um, that along with vintage. We have a vintage store also right next door. This town is huge with vintage. Um, right next to every flower shop is a vintage shop. So these are also about every, about every third shop. But I really do enjoy the, the vintage um, aspect of this town there. The clothes are very colorful and there are, I mean, there are hundreds of these shops. And of course, these are some of the, the main ones, which of course are really beautiful and like very sparkly and, and sort of high end, if you will. But I mean, there, there, there are these types of cool vintage shops all over. Let me just give you the, um, the, the money shot, as they say, the pretty shot. I'm just going to go to the end of the street and then flip around for you. All right. <laughs> I am just crossing the street in case you hear cars. Okay. Um, another reason this place sort of reminds me of the UK. Actually, here, I'll just, I'll give you this view first. Um, it reminds me of the UK because there are so, so many hills. So when I was in Edinburgh, of course, you, you, you just climb and climb and climb because the city is built on basically two different levels. And that is how this city feels as well. Um, we're not going up this way, but I did just want to show you the, um, the, there's a huge sort of hill right here. There are also steps over here. And uh, there are, there are automatic, um, automatic floors. Like, how do I say this? It's basically a floor that's on like an escalator, but it doesn't go up. It just, it just helps you get up the hill without any steps. Sort of like a flat escalator, I guess. Um, there are quite a few of those around. We won't see any down by the old town, but I thought that was so interesting to see that even the, the folks who rebuilt this city said, you know what, we, we are also tired of just climbing and climbing and climbing. So 
people are people are often using those automatic pathway things, which I think is really neat. Okay, let's now head over to our our next point, which I think is really beautiful. For those of you who are just joining, my name is Kelsey and we are in Santander in Northern Spain. So in 1941, a giant fire started on February 15th and burned till the evening of February 16th. So it lasted for two whole days and it basically burned the entirety of Old Town except for part of the cathedral and a few other buildings that were only lightly damaged. But this is which is basically a play on words that says 64 little portholes here and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you all the way around but basically these these little portholes are around this whole plaza as uh, little archways I guess are around the whole plaza and this was what they built start the start the the healing of the city I said you know what we have just seen our whole city burn there were over a hundred thousand people that were suddenly homeless luckily only one death um not, not luckily of course but the fact that it wasn't more is a miracle i would say because a hundred thousand homes were burned and this plaza porticada is uh is sort of what they what they built shortly after the fire to help people heal and had a, a whole of this city, even if theirs was burned, which I think is very sweet. Um, so if you have been following my tours, I've been on sort of a, a small town kick going along the Mediterranean coast, just taking the little local tram, I guess the train, but they call it the tram, up the, or up and down the coast actually. Um, this I did have to fly to, so I found a ticket for five U.S. dollars <laughs> from Valencia to Santander, which I just think is insane. Five U.S. dollars, and the flight was about an hour and ten minutes, and uh, I got here about five hours ago. And from what, when we were landing, I thought, gosh, this really, this really feels like Denver. It's um. I was I was living in Denver. My husband and I were living in Denver right before we moved back over here, and I I was thinking, man, this this landing is really rough. It, it's so bumpy. We're just we're getting just kicked around. The flights the plane is going up and down, and the woman next to me looked like she was about to pass out. And so I I uh, I was in the very back, and I was chatting with one of the flight attendants. I said, is this normal? And I said, this feels like the, the Denver landing. She goes, this actually is very similar to Denver. We've got lots of mountains, which then creates lots of uh, an updraft or like lots of wind that kind of knocks around the plane. She's like, but we're used to it. Don't worry. It's just going to be kind of uncomfortable, but we are used to it here. So that, not that it made it feel any better as you're, you know, plummeting thousands of feet at a time. But it did make me kind of go, okay, well, if the pilot has got it under control, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> All right, let me go to the very end here before we go to our, our next location and just give you the, the full view. I always like these plazas with the archways that have that have the arches all the way around. Oh my gosh, look at this woman's outfit. Oh, they're so stylish in Spain. I'm walking around in like gym shoes and I'm going, gosh, these women in their heels are just amazing. Okay, so here is, here is one corner of the Plaza Porticana. So very pretty. And again, we have 64 of these little arches throughout the whole building, so on, like in this square itself, we don't see 64, but it's the whole, the whole um, entirety of each part of this building that, these buildings that are connected, I guess, that is, that are 64. 
Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and as a, as I was looking researching all of the things about San Mendo, I uh, I saw that it was about to rain the entire time that I was here, which luckily it's not raining right now. But um, I thought, gosh, that's that's disappointing. You know, nobody wants to go visit somewhere when it's raining. And uh, then I was looking, and it's basically because this uh, this part of Spain is is known as Green Spain. Uh, we are just going to cross the street here. Let me, before I continue with my story, this is the post office, which is, um, this is one of, there are some original stones in it, but a lot of this was destroyed as well. Very sadly, of course. We'll just get across the street and show you some of the cool parts. But yeah, so this is part of Green Spain, which basically means they've got a lot of rain, a lot of wind and cloudy weather, a lot of gray, if you will. And people have compared it to Oregon, which of course, being born in Portland, I thought, wow, I feel right at home. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to kind of get down below here so I can give you the... Uh, the full view. I really wish I could pan or like make it smaller so you could see the whole thing, but I can kind of go back a little bit, I guess. Um, again, this is the post office and you can see the, the beautiful decorations by the clock. That is part of, part of Basque country decorations. We're, we're not quite in Basque country yet. That is what we are learning about tomorrow and Sunday for my, or and, I'm sorry, not Sunday, tomorrow and Thursday. I usually travel on weekends, so it's strange to not have tours on Sunday. <laughs> um, that is what we are going to learn about in Bilbao. So tomorrow I am taking a bus for just a, uh, a short period of time, which will take me to Bilbao so that I can show all of you not only the Guggenheim Museum, but also a little bit of Basque country but all right before we get there though I do want to just pop through these trees which are of course part of green Spain and we're gonna head over to the cathedral um, you know they say that the way that they they value or the way that they place value on a city's livability is by how many spaces there are to sit for free. And I have to say, there are so many benches and little little nooks and crannies to sit on in this town. It is, um, I mean, people are just out either, you know, having a little, having a little snack, they've got their wine, which who knows where they got it, or they're checking their phones or whatnot. This, um, these are just some of the the places to sit here, which I think is really neat. Okay. Let's now head over to the cathedral. Oh, it is a little bit windy. I'm trying to avoid the wind, but if you ever can't hear me, do let me know. Okay, so this is the Santander Cathedral. Luckily, a lot of this did not burn in the fire. You can see this building here behind it, though. This is actually owned by the church. It's, um, this building did burn down, though. So they were they were very nervous that this 13th century cathedral would burn down. Um, a little bit of it did, unfortunately, but not the, um, not the underground sort of mini church that is inside. And that's actually what we're going to see today because the cathedral itself is very beautiful, but all things in Spain, it closes at two in the afternoon. <laughs> so, and they, during the week, they don't have a, a part of time where they open up after siesta. So we're actually going to what I think is the coolest part of this church, but I would love to know your thoughts as well. Let me just give you the good view of these beautiful archways here. So this part of the church was built in the 14th century. Oh, 
up. They just closed it. No, that's okay. We'll walk around it, but it's still really pretty. Um, this part of the church was built in the 14th century. And there's also a part behind here that was built in the 15th century. And uh, inside here, they have the remains of one of the one of the poets that that came out of this part of Spain that they uh, they sort of idolize here. So let me just show you the beautiful arches found right here. I think this is a very neat little little arch right here. Oh, that's so pretty. Get that yeah so these are the original stones from from the get you the we get you the view these are the original stones from the 13th century and again this church was only slightly impacted by the fire in 1941 thank goodness but it was um it was significantly impacted by a an explosion on a ship in 1893 we are right next to the dock um, we're going to go on the other side and, and check out the water and of course the the prized mass the prized modern masterpiece of course at the uh, at the end of the tour as well as some more chocolate because you know that's how i am so i do want to show you one more beautiful view all right, I'm gonna flip the camera. So three, two, one. Here is another beautiful view of this part of the church. Of course, they've got the clock up there. The clock is the right time. I apologize for the shaky. We have lots of wind happening right now. It is, um, oh, that's so cute. There's this couple in there sort of dancing and smooching, which I think is cute. Um, Spain is a very romantic country. All right, we're going to flip back. Three, two, one. Okay. All right. Um, just one more thing while we're over here. This is the Alfonso the 13th Plaza. Alfonso the 13th was one of the last sort of oligarch monarchs that they had here <laughs> and uh he basically owned everything and there were four main reasons why his whole his whole rule was bound to fail mainly the fact that rich people owned a lot of the money and a lot of other people did not so sound familiar but <laughs> Um, so in order to sort of commemorate his, his rule, his monarchy, or his, his ruling of this part of the country, this is the, uh, the plaza that they created for him, and that's his statue right there. I did just want to show you one more of these beautiful balconies as we walk to our last Stop. And I say last stop, but really I've got about six things in or, or like on this last stop. So stick around. Okay, here is another one of these beautiful balconies, which I just think this is so cool. It literally just sits on the building. They created these little these little arms that just holds up the balcony and they just built it on the outside and connected it. These, um, these patterns again are part of the Basque country traditions. Um, we will talk a little bit more about that in Bilbao, but, um, Santander specifically is known for its, its, um, balcony traditions, I guess. So here is, this again is the post office and um, this little, this little balcony here is one of the main ones on this building. All right, let's now skadoodle along here 
here is another view of this church in case you want to see the very top. These, uh, these limestones, again, were from the 13th century, 14th century. Well, 13th century and then restored in the 14th century. So they're still old. <laughs> they're still very old. Uh, we have lots of palm trees here, even though it is northern Spain and technically colder. It is still Spain, so it is very warm in the summer and it's getting there in the spring. Although I have to say, I'm a little chilly. I'm wearing my coat, whereas a couple days ago in Cuyera and Sagunto, ho, oh, oh, I was so hot. So that's on the Mediterranean though. Okay, we are now heading to the center Botin. It is a big modern art building that is sort of the modern art masterpiece, as it's called. Next to it, we're going to go over to it, but as I'm walking next to it are the gardens that are, um, as we were talking about earlier with like livability, this is one of the, the highest rated livable cities not only because look at these beautiful buildings here th this whole street is like this that was the plaza we were in earlier over here but um a lot of these buildings are the the very ornate ones that we're looking at those are original and then you'll see these block like ones which are the ones that were rebuilt after the fire but i did just want to show you so this is, oh, sorry about the wind. This is a hotel. It's called Hotel Bahia. And they have this little demonstration here for this little art here, or I don't know, a picture here of what this building looked like after the fire in 1941. It's sort of hard to line it up for you. But this building, as you can see, it was entirely leveled. Um, let's see if I can, I can kind of line it up a little bit. Ugh. But yes, this, uh, this building was entirely leveled. People predict that this was one of the, well, it is one of the possible starting locations for the fire, which is, of course, very sad. And the fire was in 1941, but this, this is what this building looked like in 1935. So as you can see, much, you know, very tall, very, very stately, but then of course, burned down in a uh, rapid manner. This one even had all of the balconies on it. I know it's a little hard to see, but I think that's so, that's so beautiful and it's such a shame that it was literally burnt to a crisp. And, you know, now we have the modern version, which, okay, wait, they rebuilt it, so that's nice. Um, two more things before I bid you farewell. So, goodness, the wind, you can't get away from it here. Oh, let me just give you another view of the, uh, one of these other big stately buildings. A lot of these were rebuilt, but this one, the, the bottom half is original and the top half is new, which I think is interesting. This plaza, plaza though is sort of the, the commemorative area for the fire. Um, the, the plaza that we saw a few minutes ago with the all the little archways and whatnot that was for the rebuilding but this was is the um the art installation for the fire itself so this is by kobo jose kobo it was built um just about 30 years ago in 1989 but it had a um, a poem that was the inspiration. So I'm just going to read a little bit of this poem for you. 
It says, neither ember nor ash nor cinder in the air, light in the leftover of holy memory. That roof trampoline of that dream does not stop. Is everything nothing? There is no one to bark at that winged thief. Nothing is everything anymore. Alive is my house. Yes, it is true. You have not died. An angel passes through your eyes. It does go on, but this is the main part of the poem that this art piece was built to embody. I do just want to get a little bit closer and show you that the um, the statues here or the figures here, how they were they were slumped and they were devastated by this horrible, horrible fire. Again, over a hundred thousand homes were burned, but they uh, they did rise up, and with the help of of the community here and the the locals here, they did rebuild. Which I think is it's very sweet. I really like that poem. All right, we have the last the last location of this tour today. So this is the Centro Botin. This is a modern art masterpiece, as they say. And it is sort of, it sort of looks like an alien ship landing, <laughs> but it has two different sections to sort of commemorate the old of Santander with the new of Santander. So I just want to show you the, the water next to it as well. This was built by an Italian guy. His name was Piano. And the city itself were, the, the, the folks of the city itself were very concerned that this would possibly be um, something that people would go, oh, what is that? Which as we get closer, I do sort of see why they would say that. <laughs> But um, similar to the Guggenheim in Bilbao, which we will see on Thursday, it, um, it did bring a lot of attention and tourists to the city. Um, still, I see your question. I will get to it in just one second. Um, this place, Santander, is one of the main locations for the Spanish people to vacation. So this is a sort of touristy, a, a local touristy place. I do, I do just want to show you the water here, which I think is really beautiful. Um, okay, so still asked how many people lost their homes to the fire. Uh, it was 100,000 people, very, or 100,000 homes. So I imagine quite a bit more than that actually, but um, there was only one death. Thank goodness. I again apologize about the wind. It is uh, hard to get away from it here, I have to say. <laughs> so we have come to the end of our tour. I do just want to show you a little bit more of this beautiful water. Thank you all so much for coming. And for those of you who tipped, greatly appreciated. Um, as they say, every little bit helps. And um, for those of you with who are on the app right now, the way to tip is to go back into the system later on your browser. Um, as, and of course, reviews are also equally as helpful and much appreciated. So many thank you for those as well. Many thanks for those as well. Um, I did just wanna show you this one little area of the, the boardwalk, I guess. Um, first of all, people are fishing here, which I think is kind of kind of cute. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would eat the fish here, but I guess that is one of the main the main things that they have in this area. So I, I don't see why I don't see why not. Um, let me just zoom in on these these um, apartments here, which are really beautiful. And of course, we can see the guy reeling in his fish. <laughs> I think that's cute. Oh, Michael, thank you so much for your tips. Greatly appreciated. All right. So now we are almost at the very end. Let me just have a seat 
and show you the last little bit of of those um, those shortbread cookies that I found. I did get a little box, and I just wanted to to open it, have a have an unboxing with all of you because the whole box looks so pretty. I'm just gonna have a seat here by this um, this little fountain next to a a uh, Miro statue. Look at this fountain, isn't this cool? I really like this. <laughs> okay. So, let's have a seat and unbox our cookies. So, they're, um, they're kind of the same as if they make them all with some kind of tea or tea flavoring, I guess. It, we were we were having a little bit of a tough time with the language, but she was very nice to me, and she was like, "They're they're very good. Like you you will want them." There is a guy taking a video of me giving this to her. I think he thinks I'm an influencer, which I think is very cool. I feel immensely cool right now. <laughs> um, so here are some of our delicious cookies that I got. This was six euros and oh my goodness, does this not look like the most delicious thing you've ever seen. We've got a lot of these jam filled ones. Let's take a little bite. Oh, they're so buttery. For those of you who live in the UK, I would like to come live with you so I could eat these buttery Scottish cookies. I'll show you this little dog that's right here. He's got little little braids all over him. I think it's adorable. Okay. One more one more look at these cookies. They are super delicious. A lot of them have they are dipped in chocolate. There's a little Madeline cookie. And then they also have um, some smoked nuts on them as well. I do wonder what flavor this is. The wind is so strong, it's literally pushing this box. Mmm. What flavor is that? Oh, it's, um, it's like a mix of kiwi and melon. Interesting. How much was the box, Julie S? It is, um, it was six euros, I think. It's 6.25 or something. So, not, oops. Oh, oh. Not too, uh, not too expensive, but absolutely worth it. I will, uh, I will gladly, I will gladly have myself a whole big box of cookies for six euros. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Greatly appreciated all of your, your comments, your thoughts, your tips, your questions. And Argentina, these are masitas secas. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Great tour. Thank you so much. Oh, that's so nice. Um, so tomorrow I am getting on a bus at about eight in the morning, heading to Bilbao, and uh, I will have a tour in the afternoon there. I think it's about the same time as this one. And then on Sunday, I will be having another one before I get on my flight. So it does it, it does have to be a little bit earlier, unfortunately, but that one's going to be equally as cool. We're headed to the Guggenheim on Thursday. And uh, we're going to also see some of the Basque culture, um, sort of, the, the things that embody Basque culture. So I'm very excited about all of this. I've never been to Bilbao before, so I think it will be lots of fun to, to share it with all of you and to uh, to be able to show you all the cool things that I have found. Um, which airline did you use to travel from Valencia to there? So I used Ryanair. Uh, there was a... A flight for literally five euros or five US dollars. What is that like? Four euros? I <laughs> think that's crazy. And then on the way back home to Valencia, my flight was, I think it was 11, 11 euros or 11 dollars rather. So 10 euros. And that was through Bolokea. But um, yeah, they're the, uh, they're the budget airlines. So of course, you basically wear the clothes on your back and bring a water bottle. 
but if we're not staying for too long, it's uh, it's not too bad. So I'm so thrilled to be able to uh, to take you all with me here. And actually, let me show you just one more view of this um, this building. Again, this is the Central Book Team um, built by Piano, I got the Italian architect, and it's basically the old with the new. So, and it's a it's a modern art museum. So very cool. All right. So again, I hope to see you all tomorrow. Pat says, what is inside this building? It is all kinds of modern art. So they have, well, I guess older art too, but um, the claim to fame is the modern art section. Cookies don't fly away. The, cl <laughs> the claim to fame is the modern art section. And um, it apparently is very beautiful. So I was going to go in there tomorrow, hopefully before I leave. Um, but then in a week and a half, my husband and I are headed to Malta, so I will be bringing you all with me there as well. And I've got about two more tours in Valencia that I'm planning as well. If you haven't seen the Old Town Tour in Valencia, where we see the huge city gates, which are awesome, and also the Lonja de la Seda, which is the, um, the old silk factory, which I know I'm biased, but to me, it is one of the most beautiful buildings in the city. So. I do hope to see you all there. That one is on Friday. So, ooh, so I've got tours with you all every day uh, from today until Friday. So I hope to see you all there. Follow me. I always appreciate the follows. Um, and as always, reviews are wonderful. Tips are ever so much appreciated. That gives me more cookies to share with you. <laughs> so, and always, and as always, more cool glasses. Um, are your tours repeated at other times? You know, a lot of the Valencia tours will repeat these uh, day trip tours or like small trip tours. They will not repeat very often unless I can find another five-year-old flight. <laughs> but um, I did find a very cheap flight to uh, San Sebastian and, or San Cristobal rather, and uh, my cookies. Okay. And my uh, and Coruña in June, as well as uh, Cinque Terre or Saint Terre in later in June. So I'll be showing you Florence and all of these beautiful cities that look very similar to the Amalfi Coast. That'll all be in uh, in late June. But until then, I hope to see you all tomorrow and the next day and the next day. <laughs> all right, follow me. Thank you as always for your tips, your comments, your thoughts, your questions. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Ah, I'm sorry for all the shaky. Okay, thank you everyone. The wind is gonna blow me.